are living with Alzheimer's or dementia. And June is dedicated to raising awareness about the disease. So joining us with tips on how to care for those with Alzheimer's is a certified expert on aging, Dr. Marcy Smith. Dr. Smith, this is such an important conversation, so I want to dive right in. So can you first of all tell us what is the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? Thank you for having me this morning and thank you for leading with that question. Many people don't know that there is a difference between Alzheimer's and dementia. Alzheimer's is only one type of dementia. There are over 100 causes. Dementia itself is a group of behaviors or a set of symptoms that are displayed as a result of having a condition impairing someone's cognitive ability. So for example, if you have a headache, something causes that headache. It could be high blood pressure or an infection. When it comes to dementia, Alzheimer's is the most common type of dementia. But again, there are over 100 causes. And that's why you hear the terms used interchangeably. Alzheimer's is the disease. Dementia is the condition of that disease. Dr. Smith, talk to us about the early signs. And how do you know when you've just, you know, forgotten your car keys or when it's something more serious? Perfect. Because dementia is much more than forgetfulness, because we're all experiencing that at some point in time in our life, but it's recent memory loss, misplacing items and experiencing difficulty locating said items. Also, word find difficulties and language changes. Someone may start to use simpler words or even more curse words. You'll see personality mm. changes, extreme anxiety or agitation with no apparent triggers, but also trouble problem solving and making decisions and also plans. You know, Dr. Smith, when we start to recognize some of those signs in our loved ones, how do you recommend we broach the subject with our loved one and get to a point where really we're going to start taking away some of their independence, especially if you've got a relative who is extremely independent? Yeah, we often have to think about the person first. So thinking about a person-centered approach person first perspective, allowing that person to lead and guide their plan of care based on their own interest and desires, allowing them to be able to participate in meaningful and familiar activities and trying not to control them. For example, wiping down the kitchen table after dinner, dinner. keeping the environment simple and calm, uh, establishing and maintaining a predictable routine so that way they know what to do next and they can do it independently, giving them appropriate choices, again, and trying not to control. Mm -hmm. These tips help to promote independence and preserve their dignity, focusing on the person first as opposed to focusing on that condition. So how do you know the difference as to when you can care for them at home versus when it's time for them to go into, you know, some kind of a assisted living? Because I think about uh, my relatives that are dealing with dis this disease and oftentimes, you know, you worry all the time about leaving them alone, about how they might wander off, how they might get themselves in a bad situation. So what can we do for them at home and when do we know it's time to take it a step further? You know, I think uh, people will be surprised to know that individuals with Alzheimer's disease can remain in their home for long periods of time. In fact, that's recommended because that's where the familiarity is. That's where mm. the comfortability is. And that promotes longevity and also quality of living. But as the disease progresses, there will be a moment in time where families will need assistance with professional support, with activities of living, also with supervision and also respite. And so you have to reach out for that uh, professional support. Again, ideally, we want them to remain mm. in their homes with support. I um, see. We think about respite. Family caregivers need that respite. They need time sure. away so that way they can rejuvenate and take care of themselves so that way they can care for other people and their loved ones. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, we've learned so much more about the disease process and that non-pharmacological non strategies or uh -huh. non-prescription strategies sure. have been proven to uh, promote longevity and quality of living. We have music memory and sure. uh, reminiscence therapy. We also have robotic companion pets to help reduce that social isolation sure. and improve social engagement. We also have subscriptions to brain games to build that cognitive reserve. Interesting. Gina, we all need to build our cognitive yeah. reserve across 
the lifespan. And so overall being able to meet the person where they are yeah. in their natural environment and using those non-prescription therapeutic options is most ideal to ensure yeah. quality of living. So Dr. Smith, uh, dementia is so insidious and I know that it is very difficult for families to deal with it along with the individuals who are suffering as well. So thank you so much for having this important conversation with us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, my grandma's got Alzheimer's, and we've had a lot of these conversations in recent months. Definitely very important topic. Let's talk about your...